Hello, in today's episode we are going to talk about Pteranodon. If you are enjoying our content, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the bell to be notified about our future releases. You can also support us with YouTube Premium Membership, which will grant you benefits, such as viewing our videos early, loyalty badges, and access to supporter-only polls. We also have mobile games, available both on Play Store and App Store, which will be linked in description. Pteranodon is a genus of pterosaur that included some of the largest known flying reptiles. They lived during the late Cretaceous geological period of North America in present-day Kansas, Alabama, Nebraska, Wyoming, and South Dakota. More fossil specimens of Pteranodon have been found than any other pterosaur, with about 1,200 specimens known to science, many of them well preserved with nearly complete skulls and articulated skeletons. It was an important part of the animal community in the western interior seaway. By definition pterosaur is not a dinosaur, as all dinosaurs belong to one of the two groups within Dinosauria, Saurischia or Ornithischia. While not dinosaurs, pterosaurs such as Pteranodon form a clade closely related to dinosaurs as both fall within the clade Avmetatarsalia. Pteranodon species are extremely well represented in the fossil record, allowing for detailed descriptions of their anatomy and analysis of their life history. Over 1,000 specimens have been identified, though less than half are complete enough to give researchers good anatomical information. Adult male Pteranodon were among the largest pterosaurs, and were the largest flying animals known until the late 20th century, when the giant Asdarchid pterosaurs were discovered. The wingspan of an average adult male Pteranodon was 5.6 meters. Adult females were much smaller, averaging 3.8 meters in wingspan. This means even female specimens have larger wingspan than the living bird with the largest wingspan, which is the wandering albatross, peaking at 3.7 meters. The largest specimen of Pteranodon longiceps from the Niobrara formation measured 6.25 meters from wingtip to wingtip. An even larger specimen is known from the Pierre Shale formation, with a wingspan of 7.25 meters, though this specimen may belong to the distinct genus and species Jostenbergia mace. Sexual dimorphism was noticeable not only in size of the body, but also length of the head crest. While females had small and rounded crests, male specimens had long and upward curving crest. Pteranodon was the first pterosaur found outside of Europe. Its fossils first were found by Othniel Charles Marsh in 1871, in the late Cretaceous Smoky Hill chalk deposits of western Kansas. These chalk beds were deposited at the bottom of what was once the western interior seaway, a large shallow sea over what now is the midsection of the North American continent. These first specimens, consisted of partial wing bones, as well as a tooth from the prehistoric fish Xyphactinus, which Marsh mistakenly believed to belong to this new pterosaur, all known pterosaurs up to that point had teeth. Since then about 1,200 specimens of Pteranodon has been found, mainly in Kansas, Alabama, Nebraska, Wyoming, and South Dakota. Due to the number of fossils, many subspecies of Pteranodon were created, just to be later recalled as a synonym of already two valid species, which are Pteranodon longiceps and Pteranodon sternbergi. The wing shape of Pteranodon suggests that it would have flown rather like a modern-day albatross. This is based on the fact that Pteranodon had a high aspect ratio, similar to that of the albatross, 9 to 1 for Pteranodon, compared to 8 to 1 for an albatross. Albatrosses spend long stretches of time at sea fishing, and use a flight pattern called dynamic soaring which exploits the vertical gradient of wind speed near the ocean surface to travel long distances without flapping, and without the aid of thermal columns. The diet of Pteranodon is known to have included fish, Fossilized fish bones have been found in the stomach area of one Pteranodon, and a fossilized fish bolus has been found between the jaws of another Pteranodon. 
Numerous other specimens also preserve fragments of fish scales and vertebrae near the torso, indicating that fish made up a majority of the diet of Pteranodon. Traditionally, most researchers have suggested that Pteranodon would have taken fish by dipping their beaks into the water while in low, soaring flight. However, this was probably based on the assumption that the animals could not take off from the water surface. However it is more likely that Pteranodon could take off from water, and could have reached great depth by plunge diving into water from air, like some modern long-winged seabirds. Adult Pteranodon specimens may be divided into two distinct size classes, small and large, with the large size class being about one and a half times larger than the small class, and the small class being twice as common as the large class. Both size classes lived alongside each other, and while researchers had previously suggested that they represent different species, scientists showed that the differences between them are consistent with the concept, that they represent male and female specimens, and that Pteranodon species were sexually dimorphic. Skulls from the larger size class preserve large, upward and backward pointing crests, while the crests of the smaller size class are small and triangular. Some larger skulls also show evidence of a second crest that extended long and low, toward the tip of the beak, which is not seen in smaller specimens. The sex of the different size classes was determined, not from the skulls, but from the pelvic bones. Contrary to what may be expected, the smaller size class had disproportionately large and wide-set pelvic bones. Bennett interpreted this as indicating a more spacious birth canal, through which eggs would pass. He concluded that the small size class with small, triangular crests represent females, and the larger, large crested specimens represent males. Size of the crest was also dependent of the age of the specimen, meaning crest only reash its large size, as specimen reached adulthood. This makes gender of the juvenile specimens harder to establish. The fact that females appear to have outnumbered males two to one suggests that, as with modern animals with size-related sexual dimorphism, Pteranodon might have been polygynous, with a few males competing for association with groups consisting of large numbers of females. Similar to modern seals and sea lions, Pteranodon may have competed to establish territory on rocky, offshore rookeries, with the largest, and largest crested, males gaining the most territory and having more success mating with females. The crests of male Pteranodon, would not have been used in competition, but rather as visual dominance rank symbols, with display rituals taking the place of physical competition with other males. If this hypothesis is correct, it also is likely that male Pteranodon played little to no part in rearing the young, such a behavior is not found in the males of modern polygynous animals who father many offspring at the same time. <laughs>